Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about how my friend Ryan and I made this Damascus kitchen knife. If you've been paying attention on Instagram, you'll know that originally I intended this to be a spoon carving knife. It was part of a series I was doing on making your own tools so that you could carve your own spoons. But as it turns out, I carved a couple spoons with it and I realized that this was actually the most perfect shape, weight, length of handle and everything else as a paring knife for the kitchen and more specifically as a fruit knife. As it turns out, the composition of this Damascus steel is fantastic. It wears very slowly. I mean, the, the blade retention, the sharpness of the blade is, is fantastic, but I was actually warned by one of my friends who is a professional spoon carving knife maker before I even started this process that Damascus is not very well suited to making carving tools because when you're carving green spoons, the intention is to leave a finish ready surface. So no scratches, no, no rivets, no nothing. Um, just the carved surface being your finish ready surface. And he had said that because generally speaking, Damascus is two different kinds of steel, that they would wear ever so differently and then leave tiny little scratch patterns in your spoons. So sure enough, I can keep a wicked sharp edge on this thing, but those microscopic serrations really do affect the fit and finish of, final, uh, uh, of the final design of my spoons. So, I brought it into the kitchen and sure enough, those micro serrations are, make it the most perfect fruit cutting knife I've ever experienced. And we happen to be in the middle of strawberry season on the farm and so I figured I might as well kill two birds with one stone and chop up some strawberries for my next batch of jam while we chat. On and off throughout this video, you're gonna see my friend Rina making several appearances. She is a local bladesmith who is wicked talented, wicked smart, and just a super awesome person to boot. And I feel very lucky that she's taken the time and to share some of her knowledge and expertise with me. Where we really uh, established our friendship was actually at a power hammer class at Pratt um, almost a year ago. And we started talking about tool steel and how blacksmithing and woodworking can really easily go together and possibly doing a line of tools together, just, I mean, not for sale to be clear, but just for my own personal shop use and for experimentation and just to kind of see how we would work together. And sure enough, this was the first iteration in that. And in the process, I realized that, to make a very long story short, knife making I don't think is for me. It's one of those things that I am super glad that I tried. I'm so thankful to have a result. This is actually the second knife I've made. First Damascus knife, second knife overall. But there is so much patience needed. And while I'm really patient when it comes to using hand tools in the woodworking world to create dovetails and things like that, just the amount of time that you spend going like this on a grinder just is not my favorite. And the thing is that I have super talented bladesmith friends that I can totally trade with to get the knives that I do. So I do, however, have to make another straight blade carving knife because this actually was supposed to complete my carving set that I was making. However, because I decided to make it a kitchen knife, I am still one tool short in that set. So I will have to make one more knife and I mean, inevitably I'll make some more sometime anyway, but oh my goodness, is there a lot of time spent in front of the grinder on this. Selfishly, I was really glad to be doing this project with a friend, first of all, because I had no idea what I was doing. So Rhino was super patient, um, helping me figure everything out, out, but also because we were able to split the grinding and sanding duties, which made this go a whole lot smoother. One thing that makes this project really, really special to me is the amount of time that it took to get done. I mean, this is probably, you know, like a 15 hour project uh, once it's all said and done, but it spanned from December before I even started working on my dream shop, this building that we're standing in right now. Actually, I think a few of the first clips in this were actually shot in this space before I fixed the roof when there was still like mold everywhere, when the building was collapsing. 
and when my forge was actually in this building. Now my forge has graduated to my front porch while I finish off the rest of this building and get that done. But the, the cool thing is that, that this project spans such a long amount of time. I actually started filming this with my cell phone and you know this, this project went through the pain of trying to get this whole business started and work full time and build my dream shop and it also followed me through quitting my job and going full time and now I'm using it in my dream shop cutting organic strawberries from my very own farm. It's just a very full circle thing and just like every other project this was very much about the relationship involved not the finished product and what I'm really thankful for is just the amount of time that Rhino was willing to spend with me to make sure that I understood the process about how this knife was made. So this little knife project has carried me through a pretty huge transition in my life and I will cherish it for the rest of my life as a result. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we started with this billet. A billet is literally just a blank, a piece of steel. This was a pattern welded piece of 1084 and 15N20 steel, which then was just folded and drawn out and folded and drawn out until it had 150 layers. So it finally had 150 layers, which is what makes this pattern. That pattern is basically invisible until you place it into some kind of acid and acid basically makes that pattern visible. And so you'll see that whole process happen in the video. That was a really fascinating thing for me to figure out in this video uh, process, basically just figuring out how, how Damascus is made and how we can turn something that's just been squished and stretched and squished and stretched into something that looks so dang cool. So thank you so much for taking the time to support my channel and to watch this video. I hope that you feel challenged and inspired to create something new with your own hands.